Please rise for the singing of the national anthem by AmeriCorps member Rosa Valente. Give a warm welcome to the Executive Director of City of New Hampshire, Pon Nitichan. Good morning. And welcome to our 22nd anniversary graduation ceremony. I'm so pleased for us to be able to gather here this morning to celebrate a group of wonderful young citizens for their years of service. So glad that we're able to be here in person and so glad for those who are unable to join us in person to be able to be part of this ceremony virtually as well. The greatest gift that this past two challenging year has given me is the gift of gratitude. The years have shown me more clearly than ever before that I have so much to be grateful for. My health, my families, my community, and my vocation. I got to work so that our kids are loved and thrive. And most importantly, I'm not doing this alone. Every day, I got to work with incredible people who are good, decent, committed, passionate, and caring. And that's pretty much all of you who are here filling so many different roles. I want to acknowledge City Year staff team I want to let you know that I'm grateful to you, to your hard work and your dedication and your passion. Your effort made this exhausting and at times heartbreaking year possible. You turned this year into a meaningful year and a life-changing year for our members. Thank you. And to our core, wow. What a year it has been. When I first met you all in August, I share with you that I have few wishes for you. I very much wished that you can be your authentic self. I wished for you to find both courage and support to challenge yourself. I wished that you make strong and meaningful connections and that you get to love others deeply. I wish that you discover gifts within yourself, and I wish that you're proud of our collective work 
that we have this year. Looking back, what I know is that for many of you, this year had further refined and defined your identity. With that, many of you had felt the love that come from a strong sense of belonging and self-acceptance. Some of you have learned the power of anger in directing you toward your passion and purpose. Some of you had reached levels of transformation that I know will propel you into your next steps. I know all of you love your students deeply. And you share yesterday at our final circle that you have found new true friends and even family. And all of you had discovered the gift of your incredible strength and your ability to persevere. I'm so proud of you. Of the individual and the collective impact you had on our students and our community. I think that my wishes for you at the beginning of the year came true and that is a beautiful thing. And as you move on from or within city year, I want you to think about all the things that make you strong, powerful, and beautiful, like those granite rocks, and about how you want to direct your energy to continue to make your impact in the world. Your long walk does not end here. It must continue. You have not yet, we have not yet created the beloved community that Dr. King had envisioned. And even though we climb one big giant hill together, we know that there's many, many more hills to climb. Continue and expand on your strength, your growth, your effort that you made this year. Continue to fight against inequalities. Lead as civic leaders. Vote in local, state, and federal election to determine who set the policies and law in which you and we live by. Run for an office. Continue to volunteer, challenge cynicism, and call out injustice. Continue doing so with an open heart and an open mind. And always be quick to help and slow to judge. Now, more than ever, we need you, we need all of us working together to help build stronger community, nation, and world for all of us. It has been both inspiring and humbling to serve with you all this year. Your voice, your commitment, had helped build City of New Hampshire so that we as an organization can also do more and do better. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. You are the reason why I serve. Wonderful guests, near and far, now it's my true pleasure and honor to introduce you to our 22nd anniversary. City of Core members,
Good morning, my name is Andrew Morin, and I proudly served the city of Manchester at the Bakersville Elementary School. What you just saw is our readiness check, which is how we prepare our minds, bodies, and spirits for a powerful day of service. Our first guest today is someone who shares City Year's belief in the power of young people as a champion of both City Year and the students of Manchester. Please join me in welcoming to the stage the Honorable Mayor Joyce Craig. Thank you, Andrew, and good morning. It's so wonderful to be here with all of you, as Pond said, in person, to congratulate the graduating class of City Year Corps members. You are truly an amazing group. Together, you've served 2,600 students in more than 40 classrooms and contributed over 50,000 hours of service to our students and our community, and obviously didn't get much sleep in between. As mayor and as a mom with kids that had been in the Manchester School District and as a resident, I am thrilled that City Year is in the city of Manchester. You make a huge difference, deep lasting change in the lives of so many. Your role models, mentors, coaches, teachers, and friends. You create positive, upbeat energy in our schools, fostering students to believe in themselves and their abilities. And as you know, there are many external factors in a child's life that make it hard for them to come to school ready to learn. But it's the positive relationships that you have with our students that makes them want to come to school. But you don't have to take it my word for it. I'm gonna tell you what a fifth grader said about Miss B. Miss B is the best city year ever, a nice person, and someone who would choose to save a human life over a million dollars. Miss B helped me by dealing with my personal stuff, and whenever I am sad, she helps me. She also helps me with my classwork too. But when something makes me sad, she always makes me feel reassured. This student's experience is echoed throughout all of the classrooms that you all serve. You've helped to improve our students' reading and math levels, social emotional skills, and confidence. You've been instrumental in elevating the incredible opportunities and boundless potential for them to succeed. It, it is virtually impossible for me and for any of us to put into words the tremendous value that you have made in our students and our community's lives. We are so grateful for your year of service or more than a year of service that you've put here in the city of Manchester. And I just wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for the difference and positive impact that you've made here. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Superintendent of Manchester, Dr. Jen Gillis to the stage for today's keynote remarks. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to start by saying I'm truly honored to be here today. Uh, when Pon asked me to be a part of your day, I jumped at the opportunity. We have been truly fortunate to have each of you be a part of our school community, the Manchester community. This year, while grueling at times, you all made it. You made it through and you played a huge part in our ability to do our daily work. And for that, I want to say two simple, but very powerful words. Thank you. Anyone who's been around me for a while has probably heard me say a, a two additional words, and that's tank filler. When you're feeling drained, tank fillers are what keep you going. Think back to the last few years. What picked you up when you were down? Tank fillers can be small, a simple act of kindness, a word of encouragement, just being there for someone. Sometimes tank fillers are big events. Seeing the joy of students and their families at our high school graduations this past weekend, it hit me over and over again. 
This is why we do our work. Saturday, amazingly huge tank filler. However, one of the tricky things with tank fillers is that it's hard to always know just how important they are in the moment. You don't always realize the impact you've had on someone or the impact someone has had on you. This can come much, much later on. I was thinking about this recently when I had my car fixed following a fender bender. The young man driving the shuttle looked familiar to me and we started talking. It turns out he was one of my students when I was a principal back at Southside. He said he didn't think I would remember him because he never got in trouble. But I did remember him. I looked at his eyes, couldn't place the name, but I remembered who he was. In talking, he told me he's now a student at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. And after I got off the Got, off, got over the sheer shock of the fact that I'm growing old. My students are getting more and more into college and into career. Um, he, we talked about his aspirations after college. I put in a pitch for returning back home. Come on back to, to Manchester. There's a lot to offer in this city. And told him if there was ever anything I could do for him, just reach out. Told him how to find me. Told me where, where he could always go to find me. He looked surprised and asked, you would do that for me? And I said, of course, you're one of my students. It's important to always remember we're all connected. Now, I don't know if he'll take me up on that offer. I don't know if he'll even remember the conversation we had in the weeks to come. I hope he remembers. I sure hope he takes me up on that offer. Either way, this little meeting was a big reminder to me of the impact we have your service to our community, to our students, is simply a gift. Showing kindness, encouraging them, or just being there, all of that makes an impact. It fills the tank and keeps them going. It kept all of us going. You may not really know it right now, in the moment, the impact you've had on your students, but I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years from now, a familiar face, those eyes look back at you, and they stop you on the street and say two simple words. Thank you. Tank filler, right? Tuck them away, keep them close to your heart. I want to thank each one of you so very much for believing in our community, for being there for our students. Congratulations, and from the bottom of my heart, I wish each of you the best of luck. Remember, if you ever need that moment or someone to connect to, you've got a lot of people back here in the city to support you. Best of luck, absolutely thank you. Please join me in welcoming Alan Reich, City of New Hampshire board member, to present this year's Comcast Leadership and Spirit of City Year Award. see all of you and to be with you this morning. Uh, I have memories of this place. When I was a kid, I used to come here to see the Western movies on Saturday afternoon. But that was when popcorn was five cents a bag, so it was a very different era. Thank you, Mayor Craig and Dr. Gillis, for your remark uh, and leadership. Uh, today, it's such an honor to be with you, City Year AmeriCorps members, to recognize and celebrate the differences that you've made for students in the Manchester community. The impact of your choice to stand up and serve goes beyond your students. You came together with a diverse group of young people. You faced challenges and worked together to overcome them. You leaned on one another and celebrated each other's accomplishments. <coughs> Excuse me. The skills you've built over the years will help you grow to be stronger leaders. And the students that you supported will have a different future because of your service to them, a better future. We know your work has been challenging. We appreciate your incredible dedication to achieving your many accomplishments. That's why we want to take time to recognize one member, one outstanding City Year AmeriCorps member. Each year, the Spirit of City Year Award is chosen by their peers 
and given to a core member who embodies what it meant, uh, means to be a part of City here. Someone who gets out of bed in the morning each day with purpose. Someone who exudes contagious spirit and energy. Someone who takes pride in their work each day and displays incredible discipline in all of their actions. When asked about this individual, their manager says, I'm so proud of the service this AmeriCorps member has provided over the uh, course of this year. Their dedication to service has been inspiring to all of those who work alongside them. This Corps member has motivated others to commit to making the world a better place for all. Since the start of the year, this Corps member has chosen the path of the idealist, which isn't always easy, but makes a huge difference. No matter how small or large the task, they've devoted all of their passion and creativity to it, producing terrific results, whether it is a small group lesson with their students or a team project that they are leading. They have certainly left a powerful legacy behind them. This recipient of the Spirit of City Year Award goes to Moore Loomis. to give my mom the three seconds that she needs to start recording. <laughs> um, thank you all for being here today, whether in person or virtual, hi Hank, uh, to support this year's graduating AmeriCorps members. I want to extend these thanks to the staff, our partner teachers, the schools we serve, our students, and most importantly, to my fellow Corps members. Thank you for believing in the power of young people, whether it be in your classroom or here. I do have a question for you all, however. Why do you think you're making a difference? This is for everybody here. I want you all to take a moment and reflect on your answer. For a lot of us, it may be hard to think of an exact moment where our efforts noticeably made a difference, and that's okay. We have to remember not to separate the process from the end result. We want to have these tangible moments of how our service is impactful but forget that the biggest impact we can make is showing up and being present in the moment. Service is hard. You don't know what you're getting yourself into until you put on that red jacket and step foot into your classroom. For a lot of us, we've managed many big life changes and major events on top of our 10 hour service days. From car crashes, losing childhood pets, unexpected trips to the ER, the loss of family, the stress of what's next, the heavy conversations on school safety and mourning the deaths of students across the country while worrying about our own and mourning the recent passing of one of our own alumni, Luvango Musingira. This year has proven itself an immeasurably painful and difficult feat. An important person in my life once told me, the easiest things in life are rarely worth it. If it was easy, everyone could accomplish it. Service isn't easy. Service is waking up every day and saying, I don't know if I can do this today but I need to do this today. Tomorrow, you can wake up and say, I did it. You gave a year of your life, and for that, I commend you. Reflecting on this, I want to ask you again. Why do you think you're making a difference? How did you make a difference in the lives of others yesterday? And how will you do it again tomorrow? One of the ways City Year teaches us to put idealism to work is by saying, if you want to communicate powerfully, tell a story. I'm going to share a story from my year of service, and as I do, please reflect on this question. What is the impact I can make when I consistently show up to love and support the lives of others in my communities? I also want to acknowledge that this story includes mention of suicidal thoughts. If at any point you feel uncomfortable, please make space and time to take care of yourself. When you put on the red jacket, you become more than just a city year. You become a role model, a helping hand, an expert in tying shoes, a friend, a leader, a listener, and sometimes the only person a student feels they can turn to. 
On the third day, I put on my red jacket and stepped into my new classroom environment. The first thing I heard that day was, Miss Morg, I'm starving. I haven't eaten in two days because my family cannot afford food. I stood there silently for a minute and remember thinking, I'm not even through my first week. After I stood there and thought of what my next step would be, I brought this student to the wonderful school social worker who helped set the student up with food support for the rest of the year. My first week in my red jacket, I learned very quickly that one, the school social worker is going to be my best friend. And two, the students I serve have experienced more in their nine or 10 years than I have in my two decades. These kids are resilient, strong, and they are the true mentors and role models who we should learn from. Flash forward to just a few weeks ago, my last few weeks in my red jacket. I stepped into the familiar classroom setting, took a deep breath, and started my day. Halfway through the day, the same student approached me and said, Miss Morg, everybody hates me. I want to die. Out of hundreds of hours of service, countless conversations with professionals, and the plethora of suicide prevention trainings, nothing will ever prepare you to hear those words come out of a student's mouth. Nothing will prepare you to walk them down the school, walk them down to the school social social worker, to hear the student recall every way they plan on killing themselves that night. I'll spare you the imagery. Nothing will prepare you to hear their cries as they call their stepmom on the office phone and tell them every reason they wish they were dead. Because students try to trip them, call them fat, tell them they look homeless because they wear the same thing every day and that they should just die already. Nothing could have ever prepared me for that. I sat, I listened, and I cried. And I walked that child back to class after they had talked it through with that wonderful social worker. As we were walking back to class, the student turned to me and said, you are the only one who cares. Everybody hates me, but I know you don't. And that's the moment I knew I was making a difference. Because even if it was just for one student, I know I made an impact. That is why I woke up every day and I showed up no matter if it was hard, no matter if I felt I couldn't do it, and no matter if the situations I was putting myself in put me at a disadvantage or in harm's way. I made a difference in the life of a little girl who needed someone to be there and listen, and who could connect her with the additional support she needed. The next day in school, she handed me this. If you can't see it, it says, I'm glad to be here. I asked the student what advice she has for you all, and she wanted me to tell you to be kind. You just need to be kind and be yourself and spend time with the people you care about because one day you might not be able to. So to my friends here today, I want to leave you all with the top five pieces of advice or lessons I've learned this year. One. Seek to move out of your comfort zone and into your challenge zone. A plant can never grow if it stays in the tiny container it sprouted in, just as you can never grow if you remain in the familiar comfortability of where you started. You need to venture out to where things are difficult, and you need to embrace the change and humility and discomfort. Two, create your own environment for success. You are your own advocate. You are the author of your own story. You have the pen and paper in your hand and fresh new pages to fill every day. Fill your book with whatever your heart desires and your mind expects, but don't forget to proofread. Three, communicate openly and honestly. The biggest and often most complicated problems arise from miscommunication. Avoid issues by being open, honest, and speaking to whoever needs to hear what is on your mind. Effective communication and listening amplifies leadership and teamwork. Four, get creative. Don't be afraid to color outside the lines and add a bit of pizzazz. Original and unique ideas only build character and boost the engagement and morale of those around you. A little bit of sparkle and color never hurt anyone. Five, lastly, don't forget to breathe. Remember to take care of yourself. You are your first priority before anything else, before your friends, your colleagues, or your work. Love yourself and treat yourself with the kindness and respect that you deserve. Take care of the brain and the heart and the body that takes care of you because you are just as important too. Thank you all again for being here today and thank you for this opportunity. 
I hope if you take anything away from this speech, it's that these core members and this community of Manchester is the best. And I just want to say, I would not have my spirit if I did not have you. Thank you. Thank you, Morg. Congratulations. Please welcome back to the stage Executive Director Pan Niti Chan, Superintendent Dr. Jen Gillis, and Board Member Alan Reich for our diploma ceremony. In a moment, Teams will be called on stage to deliver personal statements about their year of service and receive their certificates of graduation and New Hampshire alumni pin. We ask that you hold applause until the entire team has shared. The Bakersville Elementary School team. Hello, my name is, oh, sorry. Hello, my name is Andrew Morin. I'm from Manchester, New Hampshire and I proudly serve as a service leader at Bakersville Elementary School. This year, I learned how rewarding it can be to teach when surrounded by such amazing students, educators, and teammates. My name is Eleanor Berga. I am from Crozet, Virginia, and I proudly serve as a service leader at Bakersville Elementary School. This year, I learned that a positive learning environment is the key to student success. My name is Adam Shirtliff, and I am from Taunton, Massachusetts. This year, I learned the power of giggles and goofiness to help open up somebody's day. My name is Hannah Booth, and I'm from Pierre, South Dakota. This year, I learned that even on days when service is a little more difficult, I can always find joy when I'm connecting with my students. My name is Kate Christie, and I'm from Hamden, Connecticut. This year, I learned that young people can change the world. My name is Rachel Barrett, and I'm from Belmont, Massachusetts. This year, I learned that teaching is hard, but it's a career that rewards giving and receiving love. Congratulations, Bakersville Elementary School team. The Henry Wilson Elementary School team. Hi, my name is Claire Fortier. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I proudly serve as a service leader at Henry Wilson Elementary School. This year, I learned to bring passion and joy to everything I do. My name is Becca Spaulding, and I'm from New Boston, New Hampshire. I learned that the most important thing to me is the relationships I build with other people and that the impact of a meaningful relationship with a child should never be underestimated. My name is Cooper Thompson and I'm from Westminster, Colorado. This year I learned how to problem solve in the chaotic environment of an elementary school classroom.
My name is Joe Hill. I'm from Stowe, Massachusetts. This year I learned how to use social-emotional education to uplift students' academic potential. Hi again. My name is Morgan Loomis. I'm from Pembroke, New Hampshire. And this year I learned just how amazing, impactful, and driven young people truly are. Congratulations, Henry Wilson Elementary School team. <laughs> the Northwest Elementary School team, sponsored by Comcast NBC Universal. My name is Finn Stauber and I am from Bedford, New Hampshire. This year I learned just how resilient the children of our time are and how resilient I can be with them. Hi, my name is Isa Atencio and I'm from Santa Cruz, California. This year I learned that our students deserve more than what we as City Year can give them and that I always need to hold love in my heart in every action I do. Hi, my name is Jess Nardoza, and I am from Chester, New Hampshire. This year, I learned that it is very worthwhile to take the time to talk to and learn about each and every student and what they have to offer. Hello, my name is Martha Ball, and I am from Athens, West Virginia. This year, I learned that there is nothing more worthwhile than investing in the bright futures of our students. Hello, my name is Thomas Luong and I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. This year, I learned that teaching is hard. However, my time spent here will last forever in growth in both me and my students. Congratulations, Northwest Elementary School team. Parker Varney Elementary School team. Hello, my name is Amy Hoover and I'm from Avoca, Pennsylvania. This year, I learned how strong children can be and that with the right support, they are more than capable of overcoming whatever they set their minds to. Hello, my name is Angelina Ioso and I'm from Cranford, New Jersey. This year, I learned that I have more patience than I thought I did, and that my students can make the highs and lows of teaching worthwhile. Hello, my name is Ava Karp, and I am from West Hartford, Connecticut. This year, I learned that it's okay to not have all the answers as long as you maintain a growth mindset. Hello, my name is Jacob Shrucky, and I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I learned that even with all of the ordeals that our students had to endure, they were able to show their strength of will and grow as students and people in schools. Hi, my name is Maggie Riedel, and I am from Abington, Pennsylvania. This year, I learned that children are incredibly resilient and capable of far more than many adults give them credit for. Hello, my name is Rosa Valenti, and I am from Rocky Point, New York. This year, I learned that every single child is capable of great things 
and it's our job as the adults in their lives to give them the patience, love, and guidance to get there. Congratulations, Parker Varney Elementary School team. The middle school at Parkside team. Hi, my name is Abby Watson. I am from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I proudly serve as a service leader at the middle school at Parkside. This year, I learned to be a successful mentor in a school environment. One always needs to practice students first, collaboration always. Hi, my name is Kaylee Johnson and I am from Londonderry, New Hampshire, and I proudly serve as a service leader at the middle school at Parkside. This year was hard and I learned the importance in giving my students a clean slate every day because every day is a new day. Hi, my name is Kelsey Bucknam, and I am from Summersworth, New Hampshire, and I proudly serve as a service leader at the, at the middle school at Parkside. This year, I learned just how strong and dedicated my students are. Uh, hello, my name is Aiden Brown, and I am from Luray, Virginia. This year, I learned the power of the word yet as the work we do always continues to develop and adapt. Uh, hello, my name is Dan Beck, and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. This year I learned that while teaching is hard, it's something I want to do for the rest of my life. Hi, my name is Edmund Sue, and I'm from Vancouver, Washington. This year, I learned that children are far more resilient and independent than people give them credit for. Hi, my name is Risa Schutz, and I'm from Redmond, Washington. This year, I learned that everyone shows up a little different each day, and that's okay. Hello, my name is Stevie Freeborn. I'm from Oakland Park, Florida. This year, I learned that sometimes you need to lean into the chaos to make a positive impact in the lives of students. Congratulations, the middle school at Parkside team. Let's give another round of applause to all of our 2022 AmeriCorps members. Please now enjoy this year of service slideshow.
this time, please welcome alum Yessie Garcia to the stage to lead the core in the Alumni Pledge. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jesse Garcia, and I am a proud alum from FY15 and FY16 core. I am currently continuing to support Manchester students as an access coordinator at Gear Up and working towards my master's of social work at Boston College. My time at City Gear taught me to persevere in times of adversity, and above all, helped me further explore my passions and my future career. As a good friend once said, my City Gear was full of tough times, great company. At City Year, I cried, I laughed, and made friends that would last a, li a lifetime, as I'm sure many of you have too. Yesterday marked six years since I sat in those seats, wondering once again what was next. Since then, I have dedicated my career in, uh, sorry, I have dedicated my career to working in education within the Manchester School District. I have had the... <laughs> I have had the honor of becoming an impact manager, shout out to the Bulldogs, uh, which taught me that you don't have to be the loudest person in the room to be a great leader. This past year, I worked at Memorial High School and had the unexpected joy of reconnecting with the student I worked closely with during my second year of service. As a student, a student that like many others faced the effects of the pandemic with chronic absenteeism and low academic performance, However, his desire to learn and ability to advocate for himself led him to achieve high honors. On the last day of school, he stopped by my classroom to say his goodbyes and said, all right, miss, I'll dab you up. <laughs> As he dabbed me up and wished me a happy summer, I pulled him in and locked eyes with him and said, hey, I am proud of you and all the hard work you've accomplished this year. With a slight smile on his face, he said, thank you, miss. Thank you for always supporting me. I know he is destined to do great things in life, and I am extremely lucky to have been and continue to be part of his cheerleading team. Now that you're officially wrapping up your year of service as a City Year Corps member, nothing might make sense, and that is okay. Stay present and be in the moment. Know that the seeds you helped plant this year will be watered for years to come. Your students may not remember your face, but they will remember the lessons you taught them. I am proud and grateful for every single one of you because I know that our students had great role models to look up to. In a school year that has been like no other, you have persevered and brought joy, laughter, and love to many of our students. As you close out this chapter of your life and explore new opportunities, I want to remind you all that endings can be beautiful too. Today, I am honored to lead you all in the City Year Alumni Pledge and welcome you into the next City Year title, that of alumni. City Year, class of 2022, please stand, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I pledge to, I pledge to put my idealism to work, put my idealism to work take, action, take action, seek common ground, Generate positive change in my community, nation, and world. Generate positive change in my community, nation, and world. Do my best to make a difference in the lives of others. Do my best to make a difference in the lives of others. And carry the lessons and values of my, of my year of service with me always. And carry the lessons and values of my year of service with me always. I am a city year alum. I am a city year alum. I am a leader for life. I am a leader for life. Congratulations, city year. Please direct your attention to the screen as we share a short video appreciation from our state's elected officials. I am honored to extend my most sincere congratulations to an outstanding, resilient class of graduates of City Year New Hampshire. Please know that I join you in spirit today to celebrate and thank each and every one of you for your exceptional service and dedication to the students of Manchester. 
Throughout your year of service to City of New Hampshire, you brought enthusiasm and care to the students in our state who needed it most. You did so during a time of great uncertainty for us all, and your guidance helped these students find a sense of belonging and thrive in the face of adversity. Your efforts toward empowering future generations of New Hampshire citizens fills me with great hope for the future of our communities. And I assure you, they will not be forgotten by the students you have uplifted during your time in our Queen City. As you round off your time here as a New Hampshire AmeriCorps member, my wish is that you do not forget your power to contribute toward a brighter future for yourself and those around you. Your passion for service and kindness has brightened the lives of so many students and families. And I join the entire Manchester community in thanking you for all that you have done for us. Congratulations again on all of your accomplishments this year, and I wish each and every one of you the best in your future endeavors. Sincerely, Jean Shaheen, United States Senator. Hello, I'm Senator Maggie Hassan. Congratulations to the 2022 City Year New Hampshire Corps graduates. Throughout the last year, you've invested your time and energy into helping New Hampshire's youngest citizens reach their full potential. Your passion and dedication helps improve our schools and prepares young people for success. You've served as role models, and you've made an impact on thousands of students. I'm grateful for your service and dedication to our state and our country. This year, City Year is asking, what does the red jacket mean to you? To me, the red jacket symbolizes the spirit of service, one that can help change lives. Your decision to put on the red jacket shows that you're committed to building a stronger, more inclusive New Hampshire and United States of America, where all people have the opportunity to thrive. For that, we make our democracy stronger. Congratulations and my sincere thanks to all of today's graduates for all that you've done for our community. As you reflect upon today, I hope you celebrate the meaningful difference that you've made in the lives of so, so many. Thank you and keep up the great work. Good afternoon, friends. While I cannot be with you in person for this year's AmeriCorps graduation, my thoughts are definitely with you as we honor these incredible men and women for your year of service to our state. AmeriCorps service is about giving back and building stronger communities. This year's graduates have provided vulnerable students with the role models they need, helping them realize their potential. AmeriCorps members understand that investing in at-risk youth not only helps the students grow and thrive, but benefits all our communities as well. On behalf of my constituents across New Hampshire's second congressional district, thank you to all of today's graduates for everything you've done to make our state such a wonderful place to live. I look forward to seeing what you do next. Good luck. Hi everyone, I'm Congressman Chris Pappas. I want to share my congratulations to the 2022 graduating class of New Hampshire City Year AmeriCorps. Over the last three decades, AmeriCorps members have become part of our community in Manchester and have provided invaluable service to young people. And the AmeriCorps members working throughout Manchester this year continue that proud tradition. We're better off as a community because of your service. As tutors, mentors, and role models, you've contributed immeasurably to the academic and social lives of Manchester youth, building long-lasting relationships and fostering empathy and optimism. Students, parents, and community members, as well as teachers throughout the city have come to know and recognize your red jackets, which embody the spirit of service and compassion. Four members exhibit that each and every day as you work to better this community and so many others all across our country. So wherever you're headed next, I hope you continue your efforts to engage at the community level and build a brighter tomorrow for everyone. Thank you all so much and congratulations again to the class of 2022. Please welcome to the stage, City of New Hampshire's Impact Director, Mark Campbell. As we look to close our ceremony today um, and our 
service year. Thank you to our board members, sponsors, and supporters whose leadership and generosity allows us to build this incredible program. We hope that we made you proud of the investment that you made in us this year. Special thanks to our key supporters, the Comcast NBC Universal, to Lois G. Roy Dickerman Fund of the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation, the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation, the Lincoln Financial Foundation, the Couch Family Foundation, Granite United Way, and our Red Jacket Society donors. We would also like to thank the Manchester School District, the City of Manchester, AmeriCorps and Volunteer New Hampshire for their partnership and their support. To our schools, Bakersville, Henry Wilson, Northwest, Parker Varney, and the Middle School at Parkside, thank you for believing in the power of our core members and for investing in their growth. You opened your doors and your hearts to us, and together we have worked together our collective goal of supporting students to grow and succeed. To the parents, significant others, friends, and extended family of core members, thank you for sharing them with us. And finally, to the 2022 City Year New Hampshire Corps, you have showed up to serve the students of Manchester with passion, commitment, and perseverance. Through your academic tutoring, leadership lunches, play at recess, check-ins and check-outs, positive phone calls home, creative and fun after-school enrichment activities, and in particular, with your compassion, your love, and supportive relationships, you have invested in their success this year. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for sending tiny ripples of hope out into the world. And lastly, thank you for helping us build a stronger city here in New Hampshire. You are part of our history and an important part of our future. To our guests, thank you for attending and joining us today. Before we go, I'd like to invite everyone to join our team in a final spirit break. Please stand. Reach your hand out towards the center. We'll count the three together, and then on three, we'll say congratulations. Ready, y'all? Here we go. One, two, three. Congratulations. Thank you all. Please have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon.